Hello everybody, welcome to our third and final randomized block exercise. We've already done a couple of these, I've already talked a bit in the previous videos um, about some of the underlying theory and just how these tests are done and how they're similar to problems that we did in module 10. Uh, so for this one, let's just jump into the problem and work through uh, step by step and you'll know, get a good idea, I hope, of the flow of how to do a randomized block ANOVA. Okay, standardized testing is very common in many countries and is frequently used as a screening tool in college applications. Students write in exams in three areas, reading comprehension, <clears throat> mathematics, and grammar. Each test is scored on a 1,000 point scale. The following table contains test scores for five students. And here we want to test to determine whether there is a difference in average grade across the three subjects. We're gonna use a 10% level of significance. So, unlike my previous videos where I forgot to write the null and alternative until the very end, let's get that out of the way right now. Reading is equal to math, is equal to grammar, not all are equal. Okay, we're doing this test at the 10% level of significance. Let's get into the ANOVA calculations. So I have treatment, I have blocks, error, and total sums of squares, degrees of freedom, mean square, F, P, F critical. Okay, there we go. We have SST. 337,360, and of course that's just given because the calculation for SSE requires matrix algebra. So if we have SST, we solve for SSTR and SSBL. SSE becomes much easier for us to calculate. So let's get SSTR. So this is B times K equals one, and uh, what am I writing? That's not right at all. J equals one through K. So we have five blocks. Our mean here is 741, starting with 714. And then 743 and 766. Seven forty one. There we go. Yes, we're trying to go through this one a little bit quicker. I know it's fast. Seven fourteen. Minus 741, oops, 714 minus 741 squared, 743 minus, oops, 743 times 5, 6790. K minus one, here I have two. Good, moving on to blocks. So these five blocks starting with 87167. So here's this formula we're gonna use, oops. So those are our block means. Seven eight seventy one sixty seven. Next 
seven fifty eight and a third. You guys are fast forwarding all this, right? Tedious eight hundred is next. Now we're here, four fifty six. And finally, eight eighteen thirty three. Okay, we got it. Eight seventy one sixty seven minus seven forty one squared plus seven fifty eight minus seven forty one squared plus eight hundred minus seven forty one squared plus four fifty six sixty seven minus seven forty one squared plus eight eighteen thirty three minus seven forty one squared times that by three and I have oh three hundred twenty three thousand thirty eight thirty seven okay degrees of freedom here b minus one I have five blocks, B minus one is four. Divide that sum of squares block by four. That gives me 875959. Now I'm going to use this relationship to calculate sum of squared error. Because I have SST, I just calculated SSTR and SSBL. So SST there's 337,360 minus sum of squares block minus sum of squares treatment and that gives me my error 73163. Degrees of freedom here K minus 1 times B minus 1 so it's the product of these two is 8. Degrees of freedom total and t minus 1, 14. MSE, so we're in this cell. MSE is 751.31 divided by 8. 941.45. Good, fastest randomized block ever, but hopefully you know, if you didn't keep up, at least you're able to follow along, right? And you see the steps, you see the pattern. It's the same in every problem. Where mistakes happen is pressing these buttons and missing a button, missing a bracket, missing an exponent, missing a negative sign. Those are where these tend to have mistakes made. So, our test statistic. MSTR over MSE. MSTR is 39, not 39, 3395 divided by MSE 941.45. Gives me a test of 3.61. My degrees of freedom here, 2 and 8. I want to point out one thing before I cause any confusion. If you've watched the other videos in this module, those degrees of freedom have always been the same, 2 and 8. And it's because I've always had three samples, I've always had five blocks. I am choosing three samples, five blocks, only for simplicity. And it's because of those numbers, three samples and five blocks, that's what's giving our degrees of freedoms and all of the problems have been the same, 2, 4, 8, and 14. We definitely, definitely can have more samples, as many samples as we want, just like the completely randomized design. And certainly you would be well off to have more blocks. Five is very minimal. But because we're doing these problems by hand, 
Well, you can already see how tedious these calculations can be. Adding more treatments is just going to make this calculation longer. Having more blocks is just going to make this calculation longer, but it doesn't really change anything. There's nothing different. It's just more of these terms, more of these terms. So it just takes longer. Of course, that will change the degrees of freedom. So it's important to not forget how those are calculated. It's not always 2, 4, and 8. That's only because of the number of samples and number of blocks that I have. So just keep that in mind. Don't think that it's always going to be the same degrees of freedom. Okay? So let's go to our tables. Alpha is 10. 10%. <clears throat> so here's... 2 numerator, 8 denominator, there's our values, here's 10%, our critical is 311, there we go, 311, our p-value, so here we're 3.61, or our p-value is just in here, or our, our test statistic is just in there. So our p-value here is between 0.05 and 0.1. Less than 0.1, greater than 0.05. <clears throat> and so, once more, based on both our critical value rejection rule and our p-value, where that's going to cause us to reject that area here is 0.1 our test statistic is out here so this area is something less than 0.1 so using either approach same conclusion as we should get we reject we have sufficient evidence to show that yes there is a statistically significant difference in at least one of those different areas um, in their, their standardized test scores. Uh, so if we were really concerned which one is statistically different or which ones, maybe they all are, we can do a Fisher's LSD, same as we did for the completely randomized design. We won't do it here. We've already gone through Fisher's LSD and hopefully people remember how to, how to do those calculations. But for us here, we have sufficient evidence to reject the null hypotheses. We have evidence to show that the test scores on these standardized tests, there is at least one subject that has a stand, an average standardized test score that is different than the others. Okay, 13 minutes, that's got to be good time for a randomized block. Hopefully everybody was able to follow. I didn't lose you. I did go quickly. Because again, see the flow, see the pattern. It's always the same pattern. Okay, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope this was helpful. Bye-bye.